Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar. We'll have a look at the precipitation and temperature from the UK Metaphors run over the next five days and then we'll have a look at the mid-range forecast looking at the GFS and the GFS and Eastern DF ensembles for the next couple of weeks as we do have some pretty chilly weather coming around for the first half of April, or at least the first third, does look like there's going to be a lot of colder than average conditions, a lot of precipitation, precipitation around with a southerly track jet stream. Some of it could be falling as snow over hills further northwards and over to Scot uh, parts of Scotland and could even fall to low lying areas at certain points. But it just generally is looking really quite chilly. Overnight frost tonight, uh, before it turns a little bit milder, before the end of this working week, looks like we're going to be much colder once again. So it is looking very, very chilly in. Indeed. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So do start on the live radar, you can see we have a uh, quite a large hash of showers going across the UK at the moment. Typical April shower regime as we have a northeasterly wind. You see all the really cold air with the low pressure system is now moving further southwards and eastwards into parts of Europe, into southeast Europe as well with heavy precipitation there, even some thunderstorms where we have uh, where this colder air is colliding with um, the much warmer moist air coming up from the Mediterranean. Um, but you can see a lot of showery regime, a lot of heavy snowfall as well over parts of the Alps, uh, towards the Pyrenees as well. Significant snowfall here, real big top-ups for any ski resorts. But looking back towards the UK, it's a typical April showers regime. April showers tend to normally actually come from the northwest, but in this scenario, with the northeasterly wind, we're seeing these showers. Uh, very similar, of course, uh, convective showers. With very cold air mass going over a, a sort of a warmer land mass with, um, with, with the strong sunshine sparking off these heavier showers and you can see they're very very widespread some areas will miss out completely uh we'll hardly see a sprinkling at all others will see some of these showers sort of linger around uh, and you can see there are some dark greens and some sort of yellows and oranges and those will be um heavier precipitation falling as hail sleet or even snow no significant accumulations uh, at all really but could be disruptive for the time that that precipitation is falling should die away as the sun does set over the coming hours um, but still could be a couple hours of these heavier showers around. Uh, but you can see further northwards, not as many showers, and that's because that's where the centre of the high pressure that is toppling. But behind of that high pressure, we've got milder air, which is going to be pushing in over the next sort of 24 to 48 hours. Uh, as I said, turning a little bit milder through Monday, to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, before it turning potentially much, much colder once again. So do have a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at precipitation and temperature over the next couple of days. Now you can see, over the course of this afternoon, you can see all those showers breaking out. Nowhere near as widespread uh, as, um, uh, as the models are making out. Uh, sorry, it's much more widespread in reality than the models are making out, it, out to be. But that's uh, sort of the traditional convective nature of it. Um, models do st struggle sometimes with, the, with, with, with this sort of convection, where it's very much pop-up showers. But those will fade over the course of the evening. You can see that cloud toppling in under the centre of that high pressure system. And you can start to see precipitation moving in with um, weather fronts behind that high pressure that's toppling through Sunday evening. Still could be some chillier conditions further southwards, but that precipitation is going to spread through very quickly through early hours of Monday. Heavy rain for many through early hours of Monday, but it should slowly clear and by sort of rush hour Monday. It's going to be cloudy for all. There's going to be a lot of light to heavy rain around. Some areas will escape it um, by the morning. It is going to be patchy. It's not like a really organised band, but it is going to be pretty miserable out there. And Monday doesn't look like a good day at all, especially further northwards and westwards. You can see almost a convey about the moisture coming in there, which is with a lot of precipitation. But through Tuesday, you can see there's snow further northwards, and that's because cold air is just lingering to our north, digging back in behind. And you can see by Wednesday, Thursday, a cold front sweeps southwards again, and we all go back into a really chilly air mass with wintry showers pushing in from the north again. If we do have a look at those upper air temperatures, you can see as that cold air leaves the country through the southeast um, on Sunday evening, replaced by much milder air, so 6-7 degrees at 850 HPA, a good sort of 15 plus degrees colder, uh, sorry, milder than it is now. You can see it stays very temporarily before that real cold air, it's just one north, sort of gets interacts with this low pressure system, spins it up, for we're plunged back into a colder air mass once again by next Thursday. Not quite as cold, maybe a degree or two milder than the air mass we um, are in now, 
But it's still going to be very chilly. We're going to see widespread temperatures down into the mid to high single digits again. Wintry showers, hail, sleet and snow quite widely. Um, and again, over the hills could be more significant snow around as well. And probably the biggest widespread risk is going to be ice and sort of harsh overnight frosts. Now, if we do also have a look at the two meter temperatures, see what that is showing over the next couple of days. You can see uh, this afternoon. Temperatures widely, 5 to 8 degrees, so pretty chilly, but nothing massively cold. It's going to be cold in the wind and on any showers, but with a bit of sunshine, it will feel not too bad. Still pretty chilly. Overnight tonight, widespread frost. Again, now it's minus 3, minus 4, maybe minus 5 degrees, or even locally, much colder than that. Potentially getting down to maybe even close to minus double digits in a few spots. Potentially. Again, it all depends on cloud amounts. And you can see through Sunday, temperatures are still chilly, 8 to 10 degrees, maybe a, ta a tad milder than today. But you can see milder areas starting to push in from the northwest. And you can see by Monday afternoon, about uh, 10 to 12 degrees. But even though it is milder, it's not going to feel all too milder. Under the precipitation and cloud, it's going to feel pretty chilly. So even though those upper air temperatures are a good 15 degrees milder, towards the surface, only maybe a, a degree or two difference. And it might not even feel that much better. Through Tuesday, you can see mild still in the south, 13, 14 degrees. Further northwards, though, more towards low single digits. So that cold air is wrapping back around the low pressure system. And by Wednesday afternoon, you see 13 degrees in the far southwest. Oh, sorry, far southeast. Further northwards, low single digits. And by early hours of Thursday, clinging on to 6 or 7 degrees in the south, but minus 5 degrees. Further northwards, it's that bitterly cold air does plunge southwards again real real cold air coming back in it's going to be another northerly plunge not going to last too long but it does look like it's going to be turning much much colder towards the end of the week setting up a pretty chilly first 10 days really of april so do have a look at the gfs and have a look uh, at the ensembles as well so you can see uh, northeastly wind at the moment, so that's why we've got those uh, sort of April showers. High pressure is going to topple with a milder air mass coming around the high pressure system. And then we see this little low spin up with the mild air to the south, cold air to the north. And as that moves through, we see bits and cold northerly winds coming back in. Um, last temporar temporarily, and you can see a little bit of a channel low there on this northern edge. Could even be some snow perhaps if it falls um, overnight, um, even into parts of the south of England, especially over higher ground. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. And we stay in this colder regime with very blocked um, conditions. You can see the jet stream is positioned well to our south. And this means we're going to be mixing in with the colder air. There will be milder air around. But it's just going to fuel these low pressure systems. And it could be quite stormy and unsettled. And right towards the end of the run, we're back into another northerly wind. If we do run it all the way back and have a look at the air masses... Look at those 850 HP temperatures. So you're cold at the moment. And then we see that milder air mass coming through temporarily. That low pressure spinning up. And then we're back into the real cold air mass. You see that channel low potentially providing heavier precipitation in the south. Potentially falling in snow. We stay in that cold air mass for quite a period. Very warm air just to our south. Um, but it stays away for the time being. And we stay pretty chilly with an northerly wind right towards the end of the run. Now, of course, as we head towards the end of April, that cold air to our north really does start to run out. So any chance of any significant snow or anything diminishes majorly over the next week or two. So even though we are in a pretty chilly northerly wind by Monday the 18th of April on this latest year fest, you can see to our north that cold air really is pooling just really over far north of Canada and Greenland, uh, maybe parts of the sort of centre of the North Pole as well. Very little cold air that is sort of left around Europe, Scandinavia, and even parts of Canada. Very little left. And again, if you have a look at the Northern Hemisphere view, you can see there's not too much cold air left remaining. Um, very much just over the Arctic and the Arctic Ocean. So, yeah, even though it is a northerly wind, it will start to be a bit of a milder northerly wind, perhaps not quite as cold as it is now. So that's something we do need to keep in mind. If you go back to the European look and also have a look at the potential equivalent temperatures, which is very useful to have a look at what sort of air masses you're going to be going to be seeing. Um, um, it gives us sort of uh, equivalent temperatures and you can see mild air mass. Then we go much colder and we stay in this real darker purples and blues for quite a period of time before we sort of transition a little bit milder before progressing back into darker blues once again. So looking really, really quite cold for the foreseeable future, as I, as I said, looking, um, yeah. Not, not great indeed. Now, if we do finish up, I have a look at the ensembles. If we do start with the GFS, um, now you can see at the moment it's really chilly. 
temperatures come up quite significantly by around the 4th, 5th of April, and then they drop down to around or below averaging. There's a couple of miles on, some of them is pushing those up a little bit, but the majority are going around or well below average now, um, getting down towards that minus 5 or below, setting up another 3 or 4 day colder spell. Long term returning to around or above average, but that's way too far in advance really to say anything with much certainty, other than it looks pretty unsettled. But the first 10 days of April does look very cold indeed. Yes, a couple milder days perhaps in the south monday to wednesday but elsewhere it is looking pretty pretty chilly indeed um, really really quite cold um, and in the longer term uh, more around average maybe slightly above average if we do have a look at the e similar f ensemble see how those do compare look at the midnight run very very similar perhaps you can see they don't quite go as cold perhaps towards the end of next week holding that cold air off in the north so interesting seeing that still chilly uh, with a northerly airflow but not quite as cold so got to keep an eye on that but they are going colder beyond that you can see a bit of a split in the ensembles around the 8th of april some going much milder some going much colder so a lot of uncertainty around position of any blocking position of jet stream and again something we do need to keep an eye on now the sort of the immediate risks are diminishing in terms of cold weather we will start to have a look more detailed at the longer term introducing back the ecmdf and the gem operational runs back into the video so we'll have a look at those in more detail tomorrow about the prospects of this cold weather or sort of on and off cold weather continuing over the coming days and weeks but yeah april starting off a very cold night looks like likely we will see more colder plunges over the coming weeks it won't play out exactly as that gfs run was showing but it most likely will be pretty similar to that with the potential highest in the north of colder snowier weather potentially but there could be widespread frosts and wintry showers at times even uh, further southwards as well so it's just something to keep an eye on one thing i can say for certain anyone looking for any major heat waves many any major dry weather that does not look like likely uh, at all um even if it doesn't turn out much as cold as some of these runs are making out to me and the gfs ensembles are showing it's still going to be unsettled rainy and it will feel chilly uh, around average or below average even if those mild uh, if we don't have particularly cold upper air temperatures even with um uh, even with mild upper air temperatures this time of year with heavy rain a lot of on and off rain thicker cloud it's gonna feel cold so it doesn't look good over the next couple of weeks fingers crossed though this is just a temporary blip uh, by the end of april into may hopefully things recover a little bit better uh, and that sort of week or two we got um towards the middle end of march that was really quite uh, beautiful indeed with 20 degrees reached hopefully we see something like that return soon so anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.